everyone, welcome to Sincerely Molly, where I share all the things I love and I sincerely hope you like it. I'm Molly and today I have a few painting ideas I'd like to share with you. For those that are new to my channel, I really enjoy watercolor painting. It is one of my favorite pastimes and occasionally I'll share tutorials on here. I'm certainly no expert, but again, it's just something I really enjoy and I love sharing that same joy with others. I don't know, I think it's just really fun sharing about your hobbies and then occasionally somebody else will have like a little spark moment and they might think, oh wow, that looks really fun, I want to try that and then they may end up loving it as well. So it's just really lovely to have your joy and then spread that to others. So yeah, that's kind of my mentality when I do these types of videos. Again, I'm no pro. I just am a big fan of this style of art. It's just so beautiful and soft and I love it. So I have some simple paintings that I'd like to walk you through. So far I have three done, but I might do one or two more depending. We'll see. They're all coastal inspired, so if you love the sea like me, then you might like these as well. They're all pretty simple and minimal as well, so if you're a beginner, don't fret. Each of these kind of utilize different fundamental techniques as well, so it could be a good way to learn about watercolor and different methods and how to achieve different styles. No matter what you create, it'll be great, and you'll end up with some pretty low-cost wall art as well with a personal touch. This first painting is super simple and perfect for beginners. Essentially you're just painting a bunch of random squiggly lines with one color and just playing around with it. The inspiration behind this painting is just a couple photos that I saw on Pinterest. I just searched coral to get a better understanding of the shape. From there, I noticed that, you know, like a tree, it's thicker towards the base and the bottom of the coral. There aren't a lot of harsh corners in terms of, I'll call them branches, but you know, the different things coming off of the coral and making sure to round out those corners so they're not too harsh. What I like about this concept and this design is that essentially it's just very loose and random. There's no right way to do this. It's great practice to understand shape and form. If you end up doing a coral painting, you could do one similar to this where you're taping off the edges so then it's kind of overflowing off the paper. So it's almost like it's zoomed into the piece of coral. Or you could do a piece of coral that's kind of floating in the center with white space around or you could do any color that you'd like. For this particular type of coral, the branches are moving in kind of an upward direction. They're not perpendicular, creating 90 degree angles. I feel like I need to look up the anatomy of coral. Let's see. I guess they're called tentacles. Okay, well, anyway. So I'm just adding more of those, I guess, tentacles. I'm rounding out the tips of those tentacles and making sure that they're kind of in an upward direction.
the great thing about this painting is that you're working with one color so you're getting a better understanding of how much paint to use you know it's best to kind of start light and build up to the color that you're looking for with that you'll likely get more depth with the painting where you're having lighter and darker spots so it's like highlights and shadows so you can play around with that but two you're just getting a feel of how much water to use to get what kind of result and that's kind of what watercolor painting really is when you're a beginner it's just getting a feel for how much water to use with paint to get a certain look so you can see in some areas i'm dropping more color and adding a deeper blue So again, I'm rounding out those intersection points where the tentacles meet the base of the coral. I'm just deepening that color to the desired shade that I'd like. What would be cool about this painting is if you did one or two other pieces of coral, different shapes, and then have them kind of next to each other, so like a set. I think that would be really nice. You could do different types of corals even. They're all sorts. So yeah, this is a great starter painting to better understand shape and color and how water influences your paint. This second painting is inspired by a sunset. It's meant to be somewhat abstract and modern, very soft. I'm not really used to painting in this style. I tend to paint more realistic. It was kind of fun to try just because I'm playing around with colors and kind of seeing what shades work together and working on building up that opacity. This first layer is just very light and soft pastel colors. I'm going in with a light blue and then a slightly deeper blue. Then kind of a tannish pink, and that's kind of the base of the sunset. And then you'll see that stark line between that with another blue, and that's supposed to be the ocean. And for that kind of ocean water, I'm adding a bit of this turquoise. I don't know about other parts of the world, but New England water tends to have a greenish tint, or at least in New Hampshire. and then I'm adding a bit of tan for the sand. I'm darkening up those shades a bit, making it more of a soft color block in a sense.
Now for kind of that abstract modern touch, I'm just adding strokes of darker shades to contrast the pastel background. So I'm starting off with a blue and essentially the blue on the background that's very light is just a watered down version of this paint. It's the same paint, but with less water. So I have a bit of a drier brush, not so much water, and I'm just placing that down. And I don't want these to be perfectly straight lines, so I'm adding some curves and, you know, maybe using two strokes instead of just one to add a bit more dimension. Where the sky meets the water, I'm darkening where that water line is with that blue, just to make it clear that that's the separation between the sky and the water. Again, I'm just doing the same kind of thing with the ocean tones, so adding that, you know, darker turquoise and things like that. I will say this painting was definitely out of my comfort zone because again, this isn't the style that I typically paint in, but you know, I think it's okay. It's a good starter painting and I know other people that, you know, have this style or maybe they'll go to TJ Maxx or Home Goods and find a similar painting, but it's like, well, you can make it yourself. So, so hopefully this is just a little bit of inspiration. I'll probably stick to my more realistic paintings though. 
Okay, so this third painting definitely makes you practice how to work with water and understand how paint moves in water. I'm just taking a fairly clean brush and dampening my paper. And from there, I'm just literally dropping different shades of blue onto the paper. The inspiration behind this is just the ocean water. I want to see how the paint moves in the water, kind of what shapes take form, or even what staining might happen. Now I'm just adding strokes of paint. What I wish I had done differently about this particular painting is less horizontal strokes. I wish I was more free-formed with how I placed the paint on. Obviously, if you're just, you know, bird's eye view looking at water, it's going in all sorts of directions. It's fluid, so it's imperfect. The fun part of this painting is that I'm adding salt to it and essentially it creates a splotchy reaction with the paint in the water. So that's just a fun technique. If you have little ones, and this could be a great little experiment for them. I remember using this technique, I think in like middle school, and I thought it was really cool. So that was kind of the inspiration behind implementing it in this painting. This last painting is definitely my favorite and I think it's because it is kind of the style of painting that I typically do. It is a bit more advanced where we're implementing different techniques that we saw in the previous paintings, but it's still fairly easy, I'd say. We're dampening the paper again and dropping those blue colors and making sure to have light and dark blues and white spaces to enhance the kind of contrast and highlights and shadows that we see in real life. I'm just doing horizontal strokes for this and this is just a bird's eye view of the shoreline. At the base of the paper, I'm adding deeper and darker blues, a little bit more of that kind of turquoise teal color because again, New England water tends to be somewhat greenish in tint. So that's what I'm visualizing and going off of in my head. This 
you'll see that I'm adding kind of little dark lines here and there. I am going to soften those up though because I don't want them to be too harsh. Again, I'm just adding more blue and kind of random shapes and squiggles. So I'm darkening those colors, making sure to keep light spots as well to really enhance those highlights. Now for the sand, I'm taking kind of a beige golden color and leaving a little white strip in between the sand and the ocean water. That's supposed to just be that bubbly foam for when waves crash onto the sand. Right where that water meets the sand, I am adding a bit of gray to create a shadow. So when you think about it, when a wave crashes onto a beach, it makes the sand wet and it becomes darker. So that's essentially what that gray shadowing will do, kind of give that effect. Similar to the ocean water, I'm adding deeper and darker tones on that sandy beach just to kind of show the different depth and level that a beach might have. Having a shading and a variety really can make a difference for a painting and make it seem more realistic. And I think it better blends, you know, if there are different parts and elements of the painting. So in this case, there's the ocean and then there's the beach and they meet at some point. And I think having that variety makes it more cohesive. Once that sandy beach has dried, you can add little kind of circles or octagons for umbrellas on the beach, as well as little rectangles for towels. You could have them be solid color or have stripes. You could do all sorts of things. And again, to kind of connect those elements into the painting as a whole, I'm just adding a bit of gray 
around one side of it to create a shadow. And that's just such a simple touch that adds a bit of realism. for this little paint with me. I do hope you enjoyed this style of video. I've done the style with DIY decor videos where I have multiple projects in one video, but I had never done it with art before, so this is my first video like this. So I hope you liked it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Anyway, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.